Welcome everyone to a quick Planet Zoo tutorial. Today we are going to talk about how these dioramas are built. So uh, this is potentially one of the most frequently asked questions in the last 15 days on my channel is how to do these dioramas, how to make them, can you show us how to make them, show us with, and so on and so forth. You know, you guys wanted to know this. Before we jump into, because it's actually going to be a rather quick and easy tutorial, I first of all want to read out what a diorama diorama actually is and how I came to the idea because understanding what a diorama is is basically already 50% of the tutorial. So according to the interwebs, um, I found something on the website uh, studio.com but also Wikipedia. Um, it says a diorama is a three-dimensional scene created to illustrate an academic subject, a plot of a story or an event in history. Dioramas can be used throughout all levels of education. They pinpoint a monument, uh, a moment of learning and show deeper levels of understanding. Um, it's a quite interesting um, explanation of that, by the way, but um, I will I will tell you in a couple of seconds that I took this concept and just, you know, just kind of diverted that a little bit, but I think it's fine. Um, the question is, where does the word come from? And this will then show you why you can actually go a bit more crazy and beyond the explanation that I just read out. So the word diorama originated in 18... Uh, 23 as a type of picture viewing device from the French in 1822. Um, the word literally means through that which is seen. Um, so it's from the Greek word di or di, which means through, and orama, which is the uh, word for seen or a sight. So the gares and botons or botons or botons, I don't know, or buton, I think it's buton. Uh, diorama, it consists, uh, consisted of a piece of material painted on both sides. So, um, very interesting, um, and we have also another explanation by Wikipedia, which is um, the word diorama can either refer to a 19th century mobile theater device or, in modern usage, a three-dimensional full-size or miniature model, sometimes enclosed in glass, showcased for a museum. Dioramas are often built by hobbyists as part of related hobbies, such as military vehicle modeling, miniature figure modeling, or aircraft modeling, um, and so on and so forth. So, um, what's also very very interesting is that this can be obviously um, translated into any kind of area you are in but I think the basic concept um, is pretty much uh, explained in a good way it is basically a small uh, miniature version of a subject to explain it in its broader context. So that means in, you know, in contrast to building like the entire uh, set of Omaha Beach, for example, from the Second World War, it is easier to just pinpoint one specific area, make one beach and explain everything on, on this very focused area. That helps, first of all, to understand the concept of it. Um, you, can, you can really take that as an explanation to, to show certain difficulties that occur and so on and so forth. But the same thing, if we want to go a little bit away from, from military stuff, um, you can obviously also do that for nature. If you want to show people, for example, in here, how a swamp works and how animals live in swampy areas, you could obviously go in and build the entirety of a swamp in Planet Zoo, but you know, it doesn't really it doesn't really tell you more than what you would actually um, understand if you build only this little cutout of the entire thing. So this is why I thought it's a very great idea to just take that very small element of a certain region and of a certain habitat of an animal and then showcase that. It's basically the original idea of a zoo. It, just in a you know more creative conceptual way on a video game because doing that in a real zoo would be pretty hard if not impossible so that is all of it according to the explanation but um let's now talk about how i made this therefore let's enable quickly the hud and i'm going to show you um by the way we have also like a second one in case you haven't seen um these ones um i put the link to all of the dioramas to the top right in the bubble so you can click either the plain list or just take the individual ones now if we go into my blueprints i will actually provide you guys with exactly the blueprint that i'm going to show you right now and this is 
is the diorama blueprint. I'm actually going to upload this right after the episode. You will find that in the description below. So what I have done is a pretty simple thing. I just basically gave you this. Um, this is a black box in the background and this is this gray box in the foreground. So this gray box, you can just tackle that, is basically the dimensions you have and this box in the background is basically nothing other than a basic background. You can delete that if you want to achieve and you know, I can just show you with this one. You can delete this, but for me personally, it just kind of breaks the illusion a little bit because you still have the access to the support buildings and stuff like that. And I just, you know, I just like the clean look of it. And you could obviously also go in and green screen the whole thing if you want. So if you want to make like a video project, which I'm totally not doing in the background right now, um, you can make some fun funky things with it. Um, but whatever. Um, so this is basically the blueprint uh, that you can use. And in order to get this done, um, your creativity is sheer endless okay you can do whatever you want with it but you always need to first of all put some soil in it in order to make a um, habitat so uh, what you want to do is you go to the terrain tool then you take the stamp tool and I always go for like the lowest height and the, the biggest width so um, this should be around 40, 40 meters in each dimension. So what you need to do, basically uh, go to add terrain. And then you have to position your camera in a way that it works. And uh, honestly, I'm going to save that as a blueprint habitat. And then it should be... Oh, that's going to be massive. Uh, anyways, I'm, I'm going to give you basically this blueprint because it has some advantages to not have the soil in. So um, you put it uh, align that basically like that. What you have to do is basically make sure that you look from each side because, again, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of how the how this tool is displayed. But anyways, you can you can still see that. Let's move it a bit in here. Is it is it aligned on this side? That looks good. And now you can go up again and just double check. That looks good to me. And then I would stay in this area and then just move that over. You don't have to be like 100% accurate. It's just like a guideline, okay? You don't need to be like overly accurate because this is just for you to stay in a certain dimension that I figured works well. You can also make it bigger or smaller according to your needs. But I just figured that this is a very good size. Once you've done that, you can basically delete this thing if you don't need it. I always keep that above or beyond. Um, just simply because if I need to measure again if I went a little bit off or if I need to cut some edges again um, I always have that thing in place now um, what you need to do first you need to have a area in which the habitat can be accessed so there are two ways of doing it I tend to do it this way so I'm going to show you first the first option which is basically putting this down like so to the very edge of it um, so like this you know and then you can basically uh, take the invisible null barrier and then just drag it all the way on the outside you can be very um, nice and easy to decide because you will m most likely need to have that on the very edge otherwise uh, the animals count as escaping as they go to the edge but if you're close enough to the edge they won't get there because it's a sharp edge and they uh, don't want to fall down and they can't jump down so they most likely will avoid going there so they will never break out which is very helpful so if you've done that um, you want to just paint all of it around you know and just make sure that everything is nicely laid out to the sides and then you can basically bring that back uh, to, well that doesn't work, um, to this area and then you can always drag it out a bit more to make it more clean. Now this is your habitat set in which you can bring in and then I always do it that way that I just, you know, go down here and bring this down, blah 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 to the ground and then you can just put your facilities down if you need them there. This is the option number one. And if you've done that, you can basically go ahead and uh, take this thing again and delete the soil if you don't need it, okay? Because in this example over here, for example, I did not use any soil. This is just the idea about that was to not use any soil and make this diorama work. So in fact, um, there's only a, one little bit of soil in here where the door is and that is about it. I covered that in here and the rest is basically um, just traversable area for the, di for the tigers on the surface, which is not that crazy, but you know, it exists. <laughs> I think that's that's all you need to know. It exists, they can, they can move, uh, you know, everything for that is just like imaginative. Anyways, this is the option number one. And option number two is a little bit more tricky, but sometimes can be even more great because the only two buildings you will need, in fact, is um, a keeper hut and a, um, well, you, at least you need three buildings, but you can delete one right away if you've built that. So you need an animal trade center. 
and that's one of those. Then you will need a keeper hut that you put next to it and then you also need a staff room. These are the only three buildings you will need to maintain the habitat because you can delete the workshop as soon, uh, the, the trade center as soon as you've put the animals in um, and this is for making food and this is to make some rest for the people. You can potentially also put like a vet in there if you want this to happen but if you're in sandbox you basically don't need that. So these are the three buildings you will definitely need. Um, you can at least delete one. That means if you go for a bit more of a free version in which you don't want a keeper because you stick to the very creative settings in sandbox, you can also do it a little bit different, which I'm going to show you right now. So you can obviously, first of all, delete the path because you don't need that one. Um, you can also have the buildings on this floating island. So therefore, you're going to edit this one and we're just going to drag that all the way in. So let's say to here you know and then you can do the following you can just basically go in and put down a trade center right over here just connect that so it works i don't know you know we can just just so it connects it doesn't really matter you know just put it down here and then you can also edit the barrier and just make sure that you hide this little bit away and then it's kind of integrated you can even push that a little bit more inside and then this whole thing would be free and you can also make like a 360 uh, rotation shot around this. But truth to be told, if you want to do this 360 shot, you can also just delete the path um, to the backside and then just move everything a little bit further over. Like so, you know, just move that over, delete the path for a moment. It won't change a lot, you know, it's only for the, it's only for filming it. So, you know, you can, you can use both techniques. It doesn't really matter at all. So this is what I do, you know, this is the, this is the groundwork. And now from this point on, your creativity is, well, limitless. You can do whatever you want with this diorama. You can now go ahead and uh, use the terrain as you want. You know, we could like, we, we could go in now and just build like a little canyon, you know. We, we could just now, um, no, that's that's maybe not hard enough. You know, we can just go in here and lower it. It's not hard enough. Let's do it again. And we just create like a little canyon. Yes, I know, I just break this, but I have an idea to show you how that could work a little bit better. And then you just go down here and just pull that over. So we create a bit more of this, you know, like so. And then just make it a bit thicker down here. And then we can, we can go back, make that smaller, and then just paint a little more edgy. There you go. Something like that, you know, you can, again, what I said, it's just like um, endless possibilities. You can just make that a little bit more rocky. And then we just put some grass here so you can see the differences a bit more nicely like that. And then, you know, we can always have some water in if that works down here. Oh, well, we can, <laughs> it's a little too, too small. Like if you want some water, you can obviously now start to be creative also with putting barriers down. So we could do this and then... Uh, you know, uh, make sure that you also go for the deepest. That's just like for for the moment being just a little trick here. Um, put that one down and then just build like another wall down here. And um, you just always need to make sure that you use the um, flat top at the bottom one because then you can just drag it all the way down here and on the other side as well. And then you can drag that one basically until into the ground. Um, and now, you know, we, we could then try to put the water in which now works and then you've got some water, you could, you know, cover up that with some stones, some waterfall effects, whatever. You can go madly crazy with these things now. You can you can do whatever you want. You can see if I go now to this uh, thing, I can just lower that down. Oh, wait, I have to get rid of the water first. So we're going to pull that one down and then we do the same on the other side. I'm just going to quickly do this so you guys get an idea of what I mean. So we're just going to pull that one down as well. So there you go. And then uh, we fill in the water again, like this. We can also go one. No, we keep we keep it like that, you know. And then we just bring this down, which it doesn't do because of the water placement for whatever reason right now. It should actually work on this side though. Yeah, it does. So you can make that very flat. And then in order to, you know, I'm just going to make that really, really quick and easy so you guys see what I was talking about. And now, again, it's all about creativity, what you do with it. Um, I would go in now and try to cover up this backside here a little, uh, like so, just putting down some rocks and so on. And then do the same on this side, make this look a little bit more uh, realistic, so like that. You know, you could also make that like a, like a rock pit now, as if this is like a lot of rocks 
Do we have also some darker ones? Yes, we have. So, by the way, if you have the feeling that this is a little bit too shiny and everything is too bright, you can always go and make this thing brighter so it will be, your build itself will be become darker. It's kind of a light play, so there you can see a bit more contrast and stuff. It might help while building, which I always figure helps a lot, and then um, it makes makes building a lot more enjoyable. Um, so yeah, we are just going to put some some rocks in here, almost like... This is like a little bit of a rocky area where you have this stuff, you know, just like so. Blah, 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 blah. I have some rocks in. Now, what we obviously would need in the back here is a waterfall to make that look good. So we're going to go and uh, make this wide, wide waterfall, just making sure that this is uh, there. You know, just the colors, people, you, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's not like that I'm going to tell you some secrets now here um, because this is then all about your imagination and your ideas. You can you can now, and this is again, this is why I told you the idea, you can recreate your favorite scene of a movie, you could recreate a historical moment, you can, you can recreate, uh, maybe build like your childhood, I don't know, you could even go in and rebuild like a scene from your childhood to make that somewhat good or whatever. Um, and we can also like, I still like the water waterfall midsection. Uh, we can also put things like that in if that works anyway. Uh, no, it doesn't really work. So we could also, whatever do we have over here? Do we have some splashy blah blah? That's some murky stuff. That's the top, the top layer. That's kind of what we need. So we can, we can just put that one in here, like to make that look a little bit better. Like so, you know, and this is this is already like a little idea. See, this is how you cover that in and now you can make like this could be a foresty area that is going to be less foresty area and so on and so forth. And if you, for whatever reason, then do a mistake, like, you know, you paint over blah, blah and here and there and, you know, make it higher and so on. And you want to have like the really nice cut out look, you know, then what you do. And this is why I save this thing all the time. I'm just going to drag that down again, like so. And now what you can do is you go back to terrain and you basically go back to the stem tool, you align the stem tool basically from top and side again with the wall, which uh, would be something like this, you know, and then you go to distract, it's a dist uh, subtract, sorry, and then you go somewhat like that and then you just click once. Uh, move it down a little and you can also increase the height in this case and then you can see you I would always start a little bit further off until you're really at the point where you like that and then you just paint that over once you have done that you can basically also go to the side you can see then it's going to be a bit more easy and again I would always try to start a little bit further out and then you can slowly move inwards because that's always giving you the better results other than going too much inwards and then you have to undo the change. Once you've done that, uh, you are ready to go to move this thing away again. I was about to delete it, but that would be against my idea. And there you go. This looks already pretty nice, doesn't it? And then you can just kind of paint the sides in a way that they look better. I tend always to, you know, try to make them very straight. So it gets the idea of a bit more of a three-dimensional thing a bit more. So just making sure that you have like a straight um, coloring on, on these things so that there's like a harsh edge between. This will always help you to make things look a bit more interesting. So there you go. This looks like already immediately better if you do it that way. But again, this is up to you. One thing that I want, need, I want, to, need to, I want to and I need to mention, there you go, is that a diorama most likely works from one angle. And the difference in that is that you create this with a certain point of view in mind. Whereas other things that you build are most likely important to look to be looked at from all angles. A diorama kind of works a little bit more different. Um, you can make a diorama which looks the same way from each side, but if you look for diorama, you know, um, inspiration and ideas online, you will find out that most of them, not all, but most of them consider at a max two different viewing angles, if not only one. So that means you have to decide at the beginning if you want to look at it from this angle or from this angle or from this angle and so on and so forth. Obviously you can tell that I decided to go always for that angle because this is how I laid out my box um, and therefore it is really important that you guys make sure how the sun is working in your safe game because see what happens if I would have chosen this angle. And then we just move that in and you can see 
now it gets a little bit more complicated with the shadows it looks a little bit awful so that is the reason that I really highly recommend to always make sure to keep in mind what kind of lighting you want to have what kind of atmosphere you want to have how should be the setting so all these things you need to keep in mind and test this out before you build this make sure to test out how the sunlight works in the specific um, biome you're in for example this biome over here is now the best viewing experience is around 2 p.m. that's what I wanted if you go earlier you can see it's already going to be destroyed if you go later it's a little bit tricky as well so my optimum is between somewhat between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. in this save file just to show you the differences I'm going to jump over another save file so you can see that a bit better all right we are now in my lion diorama and you can see that this diorama I already checked that a little bit more different I, you can see I put it to 2 p.m. so you can three that uh, see that there is a difference um, if you put here 2 to 3 p.m. that just doesn't work. This one is made with a bit more of an earlier light concept in mind. Um, so I have the optimum for this one between 12 and 1 ish p.m. It does actually go to like 1.30 um, but it's like between 1 and uh, 1 and 1.30, uh, no actually 12 and 1.30. Um, so I always try to go for the best effect of contrast and shadow. So 12.30 is around what I used for my build. Um, and again, you have to think about diorama builds a bit more as in a uh, art concept or like an art project rather than a video game and I think this is the perfect description um, in, in combination to what I read out at the beginning. I hope you guys found this uh, useful and helpful. It actually got a little bit longer than I expected because me rambling so much about it but I really hope that I could give you some insights in, in what I think about when I do these things and maybe it gave you some inspiration to build some on your own and I can't wait to see which ones you are coming up and uh, for now your last task for today's video is stick with me there will be two new intro versions of my channel I have created if you don't want to see them just give away it, it doesn't matter um, but if you want to please let me know which one you favor um, uh, you have to just say uh, bubble liquid or the more um, synthwave 80 styled ones you will definitely see what I mean um, and let me know in the comments down below which one you like more and if you need more tutorials let me know which kind of topics you want a tutorial on we can do that as well and other than that I wish you a great week and if you want to catch me live I'll be live streaming tonight how awesome is that make sure to keep your eyes peeled on the channel and on Twitch, you'll be notified when I'm live. So, see you later, have a good time, stay safe everyone, and goodbye.